Hi the doodly basement guardians, in the previous episode we created an enemy class and put all game objects inside their own package. In this episode we will give the enemy some brothers and sisters and also implement collision detection between the enemies and the player. We start by navigating to the game class and comment out the enemy initialization and declaration. Instead of having one enemy in a single variable, we want to create an enemy list which we can add and remove enemies from dynamically. Since we want to change the list dynamically, we cannot create an enemy array which would require a fixed length of the list. What we instead can do is to create an enemy list by writing private list and enemy inside angle brackets and then the name enemy list equals to new array list of type enemy. We now have an empty enemy list and the next step is to implement the logic for adding enemies to it. Navigate to the update method and write if enemy is ready to spawn, then enemy list will add a new enemy to itself. We supply the context and the player to the enemy's constructor. The next thing we need to do is to loop through the enemy list and update each enemy. We write for enemy enemy in enemy list call enemy dot update. The only thing left to do in the update method is to implement the ready to spawn method in the enemy class. So we navigate to it and hit alt plus return and select create method. We begin to write a method description saying that ready to spawn checks if a new enemy should spawn according to a decided number of spawns per minute, which is decided by the constant spawns per minute at the top of this class. We then write that if the number of update cycles we want to wait until the next spawn is less than or equal to zero, then we increment the number of update cycles to wait by the number of update cycles that are left before the next spawn. Since the updates until next spawn variable was less than or equal to zero, we return true, which will let the update method in the game class add a new enemy to the game. In the else case, we want the updates until next spawn counter to decrease by one cycle, so we write updates until next spawn minus minus. And as you could guess, we also return false since we don't want to spawn a new enemy. Then we create the field updates until next spawn and set the type to double and we initialize its value to the constant updates per spawn. Then we create constant field updates per spawn and set its value to game loop dot max ups and divide it by how many spawns we want to have per second. We create a new constant field for spawns per second but decide that it's kind of weird to specify how many spawns we want per second. I mean, it would be much more convenient to think about how many spawns we want per minute. So we initialize it to spawns per minute divided by 60 to convert from minutes to seconds. And lastly, we create the constant field spawns per minute, which we initialize to 20 spawns per minute. Now we can head back to the update method in the game class and hit alt plus return and select create constructor. We want to store the player, so we write this.player equals player, and we can also copy the super constructor from the other constructor and paste it in our new constructor. Maybe you now realize that some of the arguments in the super constructor are marked with a red underscore, and this is because the variables do not yet have any values. So what we need to do is to supply what values we want for the position in x and y, and also the radius. We can start with changing the format of the super constructor so we can make calculations in the input arguments without worrying about the statement being too long. So what we want to do here is to randomly choose a position every time the constructor is called. So in position x argument we can write math.random which will return a double between 0 and 1. And then we can multiply it by 1000 which will scale the number to between 0 and 1000. We write the same expression for position in y and set the radius to 30 pixels. Now we only have to go to the draw method inside the game class and instead of drawing the single enemy we loop through all enemies in the enemy class, just as we did in the update method. And we now call enemy.drawCanvas. Now we can run the app and see how, wait a minute, we see no enemies. Ok, now I see what I forgot, we need to actually draw the enemy and not update it again. We run the app again and wow it's working so now the first part of the implementation is done. But we also want to add collision detection and remove enemies once they collide with the player. 
to check collision between the enemies and the player, we need to once more iterate through the enemy list and in every iteration check for collisions between enemies and the player. To make it easier to remove enemies, we will not use an ordinary for loop to iterate through the enemy list. Instead, we will use a class called iterator, which will help us make element-wise operations on the enemy list. First, we need to supply the element type of the list as input to the iterator's generic type invocation. Then, we name the iterator iterator enemy and initialize it to enemylist.iterator, which will create a new iterator object for the enemy list. Now, when we have an iterator object for the enemy list, we can write a while loop which will loop through the enemy list as long as iterator enemy has a next enemy in its list. And in each iteration, we want to check if the current enemy is colliding with the player. So we write is colliding and pass iterator enemy dot next as the first argument, which will give us the current enemy. And we also pass the player as the second argument. What we then want to do if we have a collision is to remove the current enemy if it is colliding with the player. To do this, we call iterator enemy dot remove which will remove the current enemy in the enemy list. So, now when all necessary methods are in place, it's time to implement the method's logic. We can start by the method isColliding. Since we are comparing two objects, which both extends the abstract class GameObjects, we could implement isColliding in the GameObjects class. But since the GameObjects could be of any shape, it would be much more convenient to think about the enemy and player as circles, since we easily can figure out how to measure if two circles are colliding. Therefore, we will write circle.isColliding and click Alt Return and create method isColliding in circle. You see now that we get a static method which returns a boolean. We will make the method more generic by changing the input arguments types to circle and name the arguments obj1 and obj2. <laughs> and now, finally, I realized I have a typo in the method name, so I changed it from colliding to colliding. Let's continue by writing a method docstring. The method is colliding checks if two circle objects are colliding based on their positions and radii. We start by declaring a double for the distance between the objects. And to get the distance between the center of the objects, we call the method getDistanceBetweenObjects, which has previously been implemented in the GameObject class. And we pass the object1 and object2 as input arguments. Then, to know if the circles are overlapping, we need to know if the distance between the objects are less than the radius of object1 plus the radius of object2. We start by calculating the minimum distance the objects must have between each other to prevent collision. And we call this variable distance to collision and calculate it by adding object1.getRadius and object2.getRadius. So now, if the distance between the objects is less than the distance to collision, we have a collision and therefore return true. Else, we don't have a collision and can thus return false. I accidentally wrote true here as well, but uh, I hope I realize my mistake soon. Now we see that we have one more method to declare and implement. So navigate to get radius, hit alt return and select create method get radius and select the circle class since the game object doesn't necessarily have a radius. Since we already have the field radius, we just return it and then we're done here. Let's head back to the game class and navigate to the update method. Everything looks good, so let's hit run and start the game. Hmm, I don't see any enemies. What could be wrong? I thought I could write bug free code by now. Ugh. The problem is in the is colliding method. I have to return false if the objects aren't colliding. Otherwise, the game will always think that the objects are colliding, which will result in the enemies being removed as soon as they are created. Let's try to run the app again. Haha! -ha! Now it's working! What do you say now? As always, thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we will add spells to the game, so don't miss that. See you in the next episode, and don't forget to like and subscribe.